All right, obviously you're back for more punishment. So here goes with Gauss's law. All right, now, in case you care, the little uh, uh, references at the top of my guided notes are all to the OpenStax University of Physics uh, for E&M. I think it's volume two. That's the textbook that I tell the college board that I've adopted because I frankly just do my own stuff. And I let the students have it as a reference. But I mean, it's, it's a great textbook for the price, which is free. But compared to other textbooks, it's maybe gets like an 80 if other textbooks get a 100 right so you get you, you get i don't want to say you get what you pay for because you get better than what you pay for in my opinion so that's my shout out for open stacks okay uh i'm john friendsley my company world's finest physics uh here we go so uh i want to talk to you about uh what i do to get students ready for gauss's law here okay so in my notes you'll see this okay so we talk about light going through a window pane and we say like what could affect the amount of light that goes to the house it could be the orientation window pane the area of the window pane and the brightness of the light so then we start talking about things like flux right the idea that if this is water it's electric field but what if it was water then you get a lot of water flowing through a little none at all right and so we come up with the flux equals e dot a or E a cosine theta, where we define area as a vector perpendicular to the surface, right? Uh, positive flux is flux out of the surface. Negative is into the surface. The students are like, well, how do you know which way is out or in? It's like setting up a doorway in the middle of the desert, right? You're just walking along in the desert and you see a doorway with a door, right? Well, which way is in or out? It's just a, a doorway, not attached to a building. Well, we find out later that which way is in or out really matters here in a moment. But first, I want to motivate students on like why, why could flux ever be a surface, right? Well, it could ever be an integral, right? Why could flux be an integral? Well, what if your vectors that are fluxing, flowing through, are different um, magnitudes at each point or different angles? Or what if the surface itself is all wonky, right? Well, every time I take an integral, in, I always say we're going to split something up. So we're going to split the surface into tiny pieces. They would write here, split the surface into tiny pieces, dA. All right, we're going to multiply each dA by the elected. Really, it's a dot product. Multiply dot product. Product, right? Uh, each piece uh, by the electric field or whatever field vector it is. Uh, and then we're going to add. So every integral follows this pattern. Split something into little pieces. Do something to each piece. It's usually some kind of multiplication and add it all up. That all. Up. So then I now I've tried to sell them on why flux is actually integral e dot product da. Right. So I'm trying to do all this stuff, trying to make it really. Easy. So now let's talk about what happens if the surface is closed, which means it defines the volume. Hey, every every photon that goes in comes out, but all these photons only go out. All right. So what? Let's talk about net flux. Hey, you remember a second ago? When we said that flux out is positive, flux in is negative. Well, that makes freaking sense, right? This is flux in and in and in and in, negative, out, 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 positive. So that's a big fat zero. But this is out, 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 positive. What about this? Well, this is going to be positive, and it's only because of the light bulb, because everything that the, that the uh, sun, you know, goes in, it goes out too, right? So uh, then we talk about enclosed charge, and we finally define Gauss's law. The net flux through a closed surface is the net charge is proportional to net charge enclosed right okay so we write integral e dot da we talk about what the circle integral is that it's not a riemann integral right that has a start and an end integral from a to b of fx dx equals capital of f b minus capital f, f that is not what this is it's a gaussian integral it's not a riemann integral like they're used to from the calculus class so it doesn't have a start and an end it's over a closed surface that loops back on itself so there's really no starting and ending point. You start somewhere, integrate all the area, come back to where you started from. Or Yeah, uh, Q and close over epsilon naught. So again, that's not, I'm, I'm doing this quick because I assume you know all this stuff. I'm just telling you like what the precursors are here. That's all 30, 40 minutes of discussion. Think, pair, share. We're going to talk about choosing what surface you get to integrate over. The students have no freaking idea what I'm saying here. I say that the surface of pay is the same symmetry, right? Uh, the electric field is the you know same uh, strength or something like that. All right, and then the electric field vector is either perpendicular or parallel to the surface, right? Um, you know they don't know what that means until we actually do Gauss's law. So the first Gauss's law is going to be on a point charge. This is super basic. So I have my Gauss's law flow chart here. Unlike the continuous charges flow chart, it fits on a single page. Okay, first question, rhetorical question. 
is the point P where we're trying to find the electric field? Is it inside the bulk of a conductor? The answer is yes, just go straight to E equals zero. And if you ever give your students one of the flow charts where you go to E equals zero, way to go. You just waste the whole page and you kill the tree and the trees hate you and I hate you. So this is just there to remind them that they need to ask this question before they go on. Now, where's the point P? I don't know, let's put it right here. So there's a point P and it's a distance R away. Okay, so no, that's not in the bulk of a conductor. Okay, so select your surface. We're going to put a box around it. Hmm, golly gee. I wonder which of these actually obeys the, the, the symmetry of the situation. Mm -hmm. Now, what you really want here is you want students to give you a wrong answer. You want that one of the things you find out is that you can teach so much more to wrong answers than you can to right answers, right? So if you have your little positive charge, your electric field, 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 and your students say, hey, let's use that cylinder right there, right? Okay. So then you can say, hey, wait a minute. I think that this point has a different strength of electric field than that point because this is far and this is close and this is far again. That's different strength electric field, right? And then there's an angle here and there's like a right angle and then there's an angle here, right? So there's a cosine, right? So what that means is that we have to actually take a real integral. Now, the whole point of Gauss's law is to not take a real integral. The point of Gauss's law is to just integrate a big fat constant, okay? So I'm going to try and convince them to say, oh, I should probably take this here. A circle shape right here because I want them to integrate a big fat constant. Okay, so here's a is that supposed to be a sphere centered on the Q, right? So uh, shade in the area of the surface that has flux through it. So which part of the surface has electric field punching through it? All of it, right? And when I say label geometric parameters like lengths and radii, well, here's what's so great about a sphere it has one geometric parameter, and that's R. Yay! Okay, students think that this side of Gauss's law is the difficult side. It is not, it's the easy side. This is my friend, I love this. Oh man, don't even give me start on cue and close. That's son of a bitch right there. Okay, this guy is what makes Gauss's law really tough. This is great, I love this, okay? So was integral e.da uh, evaluate? You're gonna help your students understand that because the electric field is the same at all these green dots, then you're integrating a big fat E, which is a big fat constant. And then you say, oh, it's a right angle and a right angle and a right angle, right angle, right angle, right angle, right angle, right? It is, okay, well, the, then the dot is one. So E is just, e, okay, here, E, I do this one time for my students. E comes out of the integral because it's a constant, right? And then the dot product is one, which can also come out of the constant because I mean, the constant is one, right? And then you integral to DA, right? So which means just add up all the area, right? So I want my students to just say it's E times four pi r squared. I will never do this E comes out of the integral thing again after this first time. I just want them to go from this to E times the area of flux through it. That's the easy stuff. What's difficult is this question. What does the surface enclose? Once again, easy, medium, difficult. Luckily, we enclose discrete. That means countable charges. That means we can actually count the amount of charge. That discrete countable amount of enclosed charge is Q. So then we're going to plug into Gauss's law, E times, there it is, 4 pi r squared equals Q enclosed, which is just Q over epsilon naught. So we get everyone's favorite, Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Yay. Okay. So then what are we going to do next? Oh, let's do an insulator, spherical insulator, with uniform charge density, right? So here we go. Spherical insulator, uniform charge density. Got to keep walking around. Keep a, they think that nobody should be here after school. After all, it's the day before my in-service, and I'm here at 5 o'clock in the afternoon trying to clean up my classroom. I'm trying to make this video for you, right? Who in the hell would do that instead of being at home with their family? Anyway, so no, it's not inside the bulk of a conductor. But if I'm inside, let's do this. Okay, if I'm inside, then it's still going to be a sphere of radius R. There's still going to be flux through all the points, right? So this still turns into E times 4 pi R squared. Easy. Okay, again, I'm not telling you how I teach. I'm going to slow down, think, pair, chair, you know, explain, answer questions. I'm going fast for you because you're professional. All right, now, discrete, nope, this is not a discrete charge. This is a distributed charge with a uniform density. This is a uniform volume density, okay? So what are my options? Let's talk about my options here. It gives me two options on this flow chart here. It says either multiply density by enclosed geometry. Let me warn you about the word geometry here. The word geometry could be the word length, area, or volume, depending upon what you're dealing with. For this, 
it would be multiply density by enclosed volume because there is a volume of charge here. However, in a moment, we're going to do the line of charge. And later on, we're going to do a plane of charge. When we do the line of charge, I will say multiply density by enclosed length. And when I do the area surface plane of charge, it will be multiply density by enclosed area. So when I say geometry, that is a placeholder for the word length, area, or volume, depending upon what's appropriate. Now, I don't have a density of this. I don't have a row given to me. So I have to do the second option. Set up a ratio, enclosed charge over enclosed volume, because that's what this is, is a volume. Total charge over total volume. So the Q enclosed over the volume enclosed is equal to the total charge, which we were given here was Q, over the total volume. So that's going to be Q enclosed over 4 thirds pi. Let's look carefully here. That's a little r. Little r cubed equals Q, the total over 4 thirds pi, big R cubed. And then guess what? Die, 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 die is what that is, okay? So then we just bring the R cubed W, Q enclosed over Q, R cubed. Over this sucks, right? This is a Q enclosed. Look at it, it's a half a page just to get the Q enclosed. This is a joke. This is pathetic. Don't let the stupid circle confuse you. This is the easiest part of Gauss's law. This is the tricky part. Okay, come back home, and then uh, let's see what we got going on here. We got E times 4 pi r squared, which is pathetic. But now we have to do Q and close. Q, little r cubed, maybe big r cubed. And then you get that. And then you can cancel that with something like that. And then you get E equals Q r over 4 pi epsilon, big r cubed, right? But again, the key is this is the part that's tricky. For a line of charge, you know and I know why it is you're going to use a cylinder. Your students might want to use a sphere. So again, do the same thing that I did before. Draw a sphere. Show how the electric field is going to make weird angles at different parts of the sphere. And ask your students this question. Hey, students, would you like for E or the dot product to be different values at different DA points on the, on the cylinder or sphere? Or would you like E to be a constant and the dot product to always be 0 or 1? So it just becomes E times area. I mean, that's a... You know, it's like asking if you want to step on a George Foreman grill, right? Anyway, so the radius is R. I'm going to say that the length is capital L. So here comes my flow chart, right? Uh, no, I'm not in the bulk of a conductor. Thank you for asking, though. Okay, uh, let's have a look here. Okay, I'm going to choose this surface. This surface has a radius R, a length of L. I'm going to circle it like it says to do. But here's a key point. The only part where electric field flows out, punches out of the surface, is this part of the cylinder, which is called the lateral. It's called the lateral of the cylinder, okay? Not the end caps. That's two circles. The lateral is like a, a curvy rectangle that got wrapped around. So integral e dot da e times 2 pi little r times l. That's the area of the lateral. That's the only part that electric field is punching through. Now, I am still dealing with a distributed charge with uniform density. Let's see what it says. This linear charge density of this distribution is lambda. Multiply density by enclosed length because it's a linear length-based charge distribution. So, uh, so the Q enclosed is going to be lambda. That's, that's, that's the charge density. And since that's a coulombs per length, per, coulombs per meter, I need to multiply by a meter, and that's going to be L. That is the piece of the rod that has been enclosed. So that purple stuff has been enclosed. All right? The green is the enclosing surface. Density times enclosed length for this particular situation. Okay, glorious. Uh, let's come back over here. E times 2 pi RL, because that's what I said up here equals lambda L over epsilon naught. I made up L out of nowhere, so it should disappear. R is what I'm trying to find the electric field in terms of, so R was not made up by me, but you just get your E lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught R, right? Okay, so you see how the flow chart works. Let me show you a couple more flow charts here. Okay, this one's going to be for the plane. Okay, so what am I going to do for the plane? Uh, what I'm personally going to do is I'm going to define 
something kind of like this. Right. I'm going to show it to you over here on the side view, right? Okay, that's my certain. Whatever. Okay. Um, so, you. Uh, who's getting, which faces are getting fluxed out of? So, we're going to flux out of this. That flux means flow. We're flowing out the top, flowing out the bottom. Uh, what are your geometric parameters, Friendsley? Well, you know what? I think I might make this. Oh, it says electric field strength of distance D. So this needs to be D so that the point P, notice the point P where I want to get the uh, electric field has to be on the surface of, uh, uh, of the Gaussian surface. So did I want the electric field here? That's on the Gaussian surface. Do I want the electric field here? That's on the Gaussian surface, right? Something we want to emphasize to students is that the point, the point P where I want to know the electric field strength has to be on the surface where there's some flux flowing through it, right? Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, so that's D, that's D. So this is gonna be 2D tall. And then I'm just gonna say that the area of that face is A. I'm just gonna call this A, which means that that's A. So electric field is gonna get multiplied by 2A because the electric field goes out two A's, okay? Um, again, the uniform density. Multiply density by enclosed area. Multiply density by enclosed area. What I have here is what's called a area charge density sigma. That means sigma is in coulombs per meter squared. So I'm going to say that Q enclosed is density sigma times enclosed area. Enclosed area. The area that was enclosed is 1A. And that is very confusing for students that there's two A's of flux, but only one A of enclosed charge. That gets them every single time. So you might need to slow down and, and help them out with that. Okay, so what was my integral E dot DA that's up here? E times two A, Q enclosed, that's sigma A over epsilon naught. So congratulations, E is sigma over two epsilon naught. Okay, so now you see how I use this kind of Gauss's law organizer for um the the discrete single charge is a joke uh, that you don't even need an organizer for that i just just that's me showing them how the organizer works in something safe and then the three situations with uniform charge density you're, you know you're inside a sphere or you're enclosing a line or a plane or whatever so now this is a non-uniform charge density so here's my charge density right there okay and we want to find um uh, what do we want to do? We want to find the electric field inside. We want to find the electric field inside. Okay, so no, I'm not in a conductor or else the charge density would be zero, right? I'm going to use a sphere again. It's going to be radius R. So let me draw it here. I'm going to use a sphere of radius R, okay? Um, so because I use a sphere, this becomes E times 4 pi R squared because it's a sphere. I get flux through every single piece of it, right? But now, here's it's scary now, it's the big right turn, it's a distributed charge with non-uniform density. So, here we go. How do you do this? You have to integrate to get the enclosed charge. The volume of the enclosing surface is, okay, you only have three options. Volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, or volume is pi r squared l, or volume is area times some kind of length or something like that, right? So because I chose the sphere, I start with 4 thirds pi r cubed. I need to differentiate. So V becomes dV, then the power rule 4 pi r squared, but then this is an implicit derivative dr. And it is no coincidence that this and this are the same thing. Here in a moment, I'll do it with a cylinder, and this will be this, whatever this is, will be the same as that. Also, they're going to cancel out, friends. Like, no, they're not going to cancel out because first we have to do an integral. Look carefully. Rho, that's the density. It's not a uniform density, so it's a function. Rho naught, a constant. Big R, a constant over little r. So a Q enclosed. I'm going to be integral rho, which was rho naught, a constant, big R over little r times the dv, which is up here, 4 pi r squared dr. And I need to integrate 
from here all the way out to here, from here out to here, from here out. This is what I'm integrating, right? I'm integrating all these spheres. So I'm going to integrate from zero to little r. I know that that is the same variable as in the in, – shut up. Okay, that's why I'm saying. Uh, okay, the limit shouldn't be the same variable as the integration variable. But you know what you can do is you can just cram it is what I have to say. So uh, rho naught r, you got to put the 4 pi out in front. Okay, and then this becomes integral r to single power dr from zero to r. Okay, so that's a one half. That's a one half r squared, right? When you evaluate the limits, four pi rho naught r. Okay, so then the q enclosed is going to be four pi rho naught big r. Oh, two because the half. Sorry, two because the half. Um, little r squared. Okay, this does have units of charge because that's charge per volume, and then that has units of volume. So this, is, so I didn't screw that up. Maybe. All right. So plug it all in. What's the left hand side? E times four pi r squared. What's the right hand side? Q enclosed two pi rho naught r little r squared for epsilon naught, and then you can reduce that all day long, and then that's your electric field. Electric field the rho naught r over two epsilon naught happens. It's not a uniform electric field because the direction is different, 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 but it's a uniform strength electric field. So the electric field actually has the same strength everywhere. Isn't that funny? Okay, that's a special feature of the R to the negative one density exponent. All right, one more. It's going to be this one right here. So this one's going to be super in general. It says that the density is given by this super general function C a constant r to the n power where n can be any real number. Okay, so how am I going to do that? All right, so I feel like the surface I'm going to use is going to be something like this. R and the length is L, right? Okay, I'm going to get the light back on. Got to move around to get the lights on, right? Maybe it knows that I'm fat and I have to move around, right? Get my steps in today because I'm obese. Okay. So uh, the electric field is going to punch out through the lateral. Here's the radius r and the length l. So the integral e dot dA is going to turn into e times 2 pi r l, the area of only the lateral. That's a joke. But what isn't a joke is having to get the Q enclosed. I'm telling you, getting the Q enclosed is the difficult part of all of this. That's the part that's hard. Okay? So V, the V of a cylinder is pi r squared l. Differentiating that with r being the variable, because that's what we're doing. What, why is r the variable? Because what we're doing is we're taking this cylinder of charge and this cylinder of charge and a bigger cylinder of charge and a bigger cylinder of charge until you get to that one, right? So the r is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think that was behind my picture there, but whatever. Okay, um, so differentiating with respect to r, Bring down the power to pi r l. I took a derivative with r as the variable, so it becomes dr. Did I tell you that this is the same thing as that? I might have forgotten. This is always going to be the same thing as that every time. No exceptions. So the q enclosed is going to be the density. The density c r to the n c r to the n time. Oops, integral uh, times the dv two pi r l dr. Right. We're going to go from 0 to R. Again, integration variable and limits are the same. Uh, deal with it, okay? That's your problem, not mine. Okay, so 2 pi and the C and the L are all co constant, 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 constant. And then we get an integral R to the N plus 1, 0 to R, dr. So then what this is going to become 2 pi C, L, R to the N plus 2, all over N plus 2. That's what that integral turns into. And so then what do we get here? E times 2 pi R L equals the 2 pi C L. Remember, that's the Q enclosed. I'm bringing it from over here. I'm bringing the, that was the, that was the right, the left-hand side goes there. And that comes over here. R to the N plus 2 all over N plus 2. Okay, so the 2 pi's cancel. The L cancels. And I get E is C, R to the N plus 1 over N plus 2. And this is actually something I teach my students. I teach my students that whatever exponent is on the density function, whatever exponent's on the density function, the exponent on the field is going to be one higher. 
What do you mean when you say that, friends? Like, well, let's go back here. What was the exponent on this? Isn't that exponent to the negative one? Rho naught, big R, little r than a one. Negative one exponent. What is one higher than the negative one exponent is the zero exponent, which is a constant. Well, that's what we got here. This was a constant because it was like r to the zero, right? Which we can't see. Well, if I did like, if, if instead it was density equals rho naught r to the two or something like that, then the electric field would be some crap r to the three. So I actually make, and, and, and that's true both for this and this and this. So regardless of what the shape is, whatever density function you're given, the, uh, the electric field and later on the magnetic field will be one power higher. I found that telling students that and reinforcing it periodically throughout the electricity and magnetism semester um, helps them cope. Uh, all right, next time I have an Ampere's Law Organizer, and you'll see that it's actually uh, the same as the Gauss Law Organizer, only it can be even shorter. All right. Have fun.